I'm Jimmy. I, I'm the host of the show. Thanks for not turning the TV off when you saw me. Oh, wait. No. No. We are... Now we are eight days away from something. What? I don't know. Nobody knows. Election Day is a week from tomorrow. We don't even know if we'll know who won on Election Day. According to the polls, Joe Biden has a big lead. You know, it's interesting. The Republicans keep saying, don't pay attention to the polls, we're going to win. And the Democrats keep saying, don't pay attention to the polls, there's a good chance we'll lose. So finally, <laughs> something we agree on, I guess. The Republican re-election strategy seems to be centered around making it as difficult as possible for us to vote. In Texas, the governor, even though we're in the middle of a pandemic, banned additional mail-in drop-off boxes. There's only one ballot drop box per county in Texas. The biggest county in Texas has almost 5 million people one box for them. The governor, Greg Abbott, is apparently worried that if each county has more than one ballot box, people might put their ballots in them and have those ballots counted, which could lead to democracy, and then who knows what. And of course, Trump, because he needs an excuse if he loses, keeps screaming that the early voting effort is fixed by the government that he runs. Meanwhile, guess who voted early? Ivanka Trump today tweeted, I'll give you one guess who we're voting for. <laughs> oh, could it be the man bankrolling your life? <laughs> and there they are, Jared and Ivanka with their mail-in ballots that go directly into the river. The president himself decided to vote in person this time around for a change. The president cast a vote of confidence for himself on Saturday at a library in West Palm Beach. Uh, I'm guessing it was his first visit to the library. Trump usually votes... <laughs> by mail, but he took the plane to Florida to once again cast a big orange shadow of doubt on those who choose not to vote in person. Any complications in there? No, not much. It was a very secure vote. Much more secure than when you send in a ballot, I can tell you that. Everything was perfect, very strict, right by the rules. When you send in your ballot, it could never be like that. It could never be secure like that. They've done a fantastic job over here. Great people inside. Who did you vote for today? Uh, I voted for a guy named Trump. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Melania voted for a guy named Kanye. Uh, <laughs> Trump was in the booth, in the voting booth, for 16 minutes. What could possibly have taken him 16 minutes? There's no way he voted on anything other than himself, right? I mean, how long does it take to fill in a bubble next to your name? It probably took him 30 seconds to vote for himself and 15 and a half minutes to soften his erection before he came out. <laughs> Did you know that, I didn't know this, I learned this this weekend, did you know Donald Trump calls his penis Lou Dobbs? <laughs> That's true. And uh, one other question I have, because I'd like to see, I wanna see the top of that voting clip again now. This is the library, those are all DVDs. It's a huge <laughs> DVD section, there are hundreds of DVDs. In Florida, they put up signs that say library on all the old blockbuster video stores. <laughs> President First Lady were trick-or-treating it up last night at the annual South Lawn Halloween bash. No reason to cancel that. Trump did a fun thing, though. He had them turn off all the lights at the White House. Then he put Eric and Donald Jr. in a bucket on the porch with a sign saying, please take both. <laughs> They did extra precautions this year because of COVID. While they handed out candy, the children were <laughs> disinfected for safety, of course. And, you know, you can't be too careful nowadays. There you go. It was a... Oh, sorry, kid. It was a family event. Guests older than two were required to wear a face covering, which explains why the president did not. The one holiday where everyone wears a mask. Still can't put one on. President's busy rallying very hard. He had a triple header in Pennsylvania today. On Friday, he stopped by the Villages, which is a retirement community in Florida, to warn seniors of the horrors the Biden administration has planned. Biden's plan would mean America's seniors have no air conditioning during the summer. <laughs> and he will remove the orthotics from your shoes. At least his lies are getting funnier. <laughs> Yesterday, Regener Don was in Londonderry, New Hampshire, where all on their own, the crowd came up with an exciting new chant. I took something called Regeneron. The following morning, I felt so good. I felt like Superman. I wanted to get back. <laughs> I didn't want to cancel anything. 
Canceled. <laughs> Super Trump. Fatter than a speeding bullet, able to bankrupt tall buildings with a single bound. This was not super for Trump. Not only is the president trailing Joe Biden among seniors, he's also polling poorly among the deceased. Georgia May Atkins died of a stroke on September 28th. An obituary published in the St. Paul Pioneer Press included in lieu of flowers, Georgia preferred that you do not vote for Trump. <laughs> good, for, good for Georgia. <laughs> Florida, listen to Georgia, will you? It was her dying wish. The main event in Washington today was the confirmation of Judge Amy Coney Barrett, who is America's next top Supreme Court justice, tilting the balance of the court even heavier to the right. Mitch McConnell rushed this one through faster than his morning Dulcolax kicks in. He, uh, Republicans made a big power grab before an election that could very well wipe out their majority in the Senate. You know, usually when this many white people get together for one last heist, it's an Ocean Eleven movie, but... Or Ocean's Eleven movie, right, Guillermo? That's right, Jimmy. All right, I want to. All right. <laughs> Mike Pence did not, as was planned, preside over the confirmation because at least five of his aides have tested positive for COVID-19. Even Mike Pence's aides has COVID-19. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Fortunately, the vice president himself <laughs> tested negative again. As far as we know, the virus cannot be transmitted between humans and poodles, so he should be okay. And he, but even though Pence is surrounded by highly infectious people, he's still out on the road. The White Collar Comedy Tour was in Lakeland, Florida this weekend, slaying the crowds the way only Mike Pence can. He's not gonna tell the American people whether he'll pack the court until months after the election. Well, to borrow a phrase, come on, man. Then he did Clinton, he did Austin Powers. His Pee Wee Herman is incredible. He's very gifted. Meanwhile, the White House's new plan to stop the virus is to stop trying to stop it. Yesterday, Trump's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, went on CNN and he admitted to Jake Tapper, he said, we're not going to control the pandemic. Of course, Trump contradicted him, not even 24 hours later. He said just the opposite, absolutely the opposite, which is interesting because the president hasn't even had a meeting with the COVID task force in months. This is like if you were drowning and refused to meet with the lifeguard. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Cases are surging like they haven't before, but Donald Trump is sick and tired of hearing about it. It's not enough. COVID, COVID, COVID. COVID, COVID. COVID. COVID, 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 COVID-19, COVID, 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 pandemic, COVID, 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 COVID. You know what? I think I figured it out. He's jealous of the virus. He's upset that COVID is getting more attention than he is. Melania Trump has recovered and is expected to hit the campaign trail tomorrow. The real Melania, not the fake one everybody was tweeting about. Did you see this over the weekend? Uh, people were going nuts over this photo of Melania boarding Marine One, the helicopter. A lot of tweeters were convinced this is a body double. The alarm went off when they saw her smiling, which is... <laughs> this is what Melania would look like if she was married to anyone else. Melania is headlining a campaign event in Pennsylvania tomorrow. She'll be sharing a stage with Kellyanne Conway while the president spends the day dancing with himself. Here's, here's young man, and he assumes they're singing about him, so he gets, you know, this going. The idea, though, that that is his anthem is incredible to me. You know, almost every song they play at these rallies is puzzling, to say the least. And I wanted to know more about who is choosing these songs for the president's playlist. So we did some investigating, and we were able to get in touch with Trump's music coordinator, and he's with us tonight. Please welcome a rally DJ Rod Trainer. Hello, Rod. <laughs> Rod, oh. how you doing? Hey. 
Good. What's up? Yeah, I was just spinning some hot tracks on the ones and twos. Okay. The ones and twos. I can, I can see that. So, so, DJ Rod, you are the guy who picks the songs for Trump's rallies. Oh, thank you. No, no, that wasn't, uh, that wasn't really a compliment. I was just asking if you were the guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's me. My job is to get the president's supporters so pumped that they rip off their face masks and throw them in the air like they just don't care. Well, that doesn't sound very safe from a virus standpoint. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you sound like one of those doctors we're always ignoring. Yeah, well, okay. Anyway, I'm, I'm just, I'm curious about the music you picked. Take us through some of your go-to rally songs. Oh, yeah, I'd be happy to. Yeah, I'll show you. This is, oh, this is a great one that really gets the crowd going, man. You ever hear this? Creedence Clearwater Revival's Fortunate Son. Of course, like, yeah. Some folks are born, made to wave the flag. Yeah, that red, white, and blue. Yeah, but, so but, good. But hold on. Isn't that a song about uh, rich kids whose parents got them out of serving in Vietnam, people like President Trump? I don't think so. <laughs> no. What do you think it's about? Uh, well, I've... I've I've always heard it as a song about Don Jr., you know, like how fortunate he is to be the son of the best dad ever, meaning Donald Trump. That is a fortunate no, son, Don no, Jr. No, and Eric. No, in fact, I and heard Baron. the lead singer of the song, John Fogarty, wrote it said it, it's about what I said it was about. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oops daisy Yeah, that's a whoops all right, huh? I, yeah, I guess the president was right. He, I am a moron unworthy of love. What? He yeah. said that to you? Many times. He always pokes me in the chest when he does it, too. Oh, no. He that's... pops on me on purpose. I'm very sorry to hear that. That's not nice at all. But don't you read the lyrics from the songs before you play them at these rallies? What is this, reading Rainbow? Songs are for rocking, not reading, if that's okay with you, LeVar Burton. Okay, fine. Listen, what are some of the other songs you're playing at these rallies? Just the usual, you know, great songs. Sympathy for the Devil, Bad Moon Rising, Everybody Hurts, You Can't Always Get What You Want, It's the End of the World as We Know It. But, but Rod, Rod, don't you see any irony uh, with the name, at least the titles of the songs you just mentioned? No, I do not. And I don't even know what irony is. Hey, you know what else I play? What? Just, just to show people how strong and heterosexual our president is, lately I've been playing Macho Man by the Village People. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I have heard that, and I've also heard YMCA, but have you ever, like, even looked at the album cover? No, not really. I only look at the back cover because I want to know the titles of the songs and how long they are. Yeah, take a look at the front of that and then tell me what, you know, hits you. That's interesting. Yeah. You don't suppose uh, these yes. guys might be... Uh... Yes, I do suppose that, yeah. 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 Okay, so that's, yeah. Yeah, at least a few of them, so that's why I thought it was a little odd. That was the guy that made me think so first, and then I was like, maybe him too. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And Rod. <laughs> yeah. Look, Jimmy. Yeah. There's a cop in there. There's yeah. a cop. So the Blue Lives Matter crowd could get jiggy with that. Yeah, okay, all right. Now, with all these big crowds singing along to your songs with no masks on, are you worried about getting sick? Oh, well, yeah, I guess a little bit. But whenever I do, man, I just relax by playing my favorite Phil Collins song, In the Air Tonight. I got it queued up right now. Let's go. Yeah, you hear that, Jimmy? Uh, no, we don't hear uh, anything. And <laughs> What's that? In fact, the needle isn't even on the uh, record there, on the turntable. Uh, yeah, so that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, this is one of the new turntables. They don't need needles. Oh, is I guess that you haven't right? had a turntable in a while. <laughs> You don't they, need the needle. Oh, here comes the drum solo. Needless <laughs> turntables now? All right, I'm going to leave you, Rob. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Oh, and look, your dog's here, too. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, click the subscribe button. And if you didn't like it, well, you hurt my feelings. <laughs>